why in our seven habits of health is sleep the first habit? Oh, come on, baby. You're giving me a softball. I am giving you a softball. Hit it up. So what do you think about sleep being the first habit? Oh, man. How much time we got? I'm trying to put this succinctly. I'll start off by saying sleep is number one because it impacts everything. You cannot outperform sleep. Yes, all the habits are integrated. We believe health is holistic. But habits two through seven and every other health endeavor will be either positively or negatively impacted by your sleep. And sleep has been found to be not only a habit of high performers and high success, highly successful people, but it is in our God-given DNA, in our design, on how to be fully human. Because I believe before we even eat clean or move often, we will not be metabolizing the nutrition that we eat, or we will not have the energy to move often in habits two and three if we don't have the fuel in our car or our tank is not full, and we get that by sleeping well and resting well. When you look at the seven-day creation narrative, every seventh day he rested, and every single day, there was evening and there was morning day one, there was evening and morning, there was day two. From day one, from the beginning of time, God made this natural rhythm for all of creation to follow. So I just believe that sleep has one of, not the, but one of the most disproportionately impact on any other, on any other, on any other thing. And when we look at, when I originally wrote the Holo State with the seven habits of health, I wrote the seven habits from simple to complex and from, pre, from a prescriptive order. When someone doesn't know how to apply a truly healthy life, I'll say, hey, here's what you can do. You can sleep seven to nine hours every single night because you're already sleeping. Whether you're sleeping three hours a night or five hours a night, the first step you can do, which is an easy first step, is sleeping well. And then we give you a chapter on that. And then after we're consistently sleeping well and feeling better, then we can go on to the next habits, which originally they were prescriptive. So that's just me riffing for two minutes. That's a great response. I have so many questions to follow up. Putting putting my listener lens on is what – what if I'm sleeping five to six hours right now, but I am seeing physical changes? Like I'm you in can. the gym and I'm moving and I'm trying to eat as well as I can. And what what's the point? You can, but you're limiting yourself. And you're essentially, if you want to get to a nine out of 10, you're only going to get to a seven out of 10. You will experience, sorry, my camera's shaking a lot. You will experience it's, positive change. It's a spirit but you're, moving, you're, <laughs> you are unnecessarily putting a lid or a ceiling on your progress because what's mm. happening is your body is adapting to operating at a suboptimal place. You are performing, let's say in your workouts or your relationships, your body is used to running on five and a half to six hours of sleep. It would be that much better when you are fully rested with eight to even nine hours of sleep. If you are running a marathon at five hours, and the only thing you change for the next marathon is actually sleeping really, really well and making sure your recovery is there, you actually will probably improve your performance, maybe to four and a half hours or something. So it's What if almost, I don't care about my performance? Like, what if I'm just checking a box when I go to the gym? Do you desire to be truly healthy? I think I, I would want to know, what do you mean by that? I mean, everyone wants to be healthy, but it's the fact of sleep will make or break all the other habits. It really will. Think of the times when you're easily lashed out, you feel empty, you're irritable, you're tired, you just need a rest. Sure, your body may adapt, but that's not, I don't think that's living life to the full. People used to sleep 10 to 11 hours before electricity, and that was just a normal common practice. Now we are just right. pushing. I mean, look at this. Sleep deprivation is an epidemic. You read the, the, the results, the, the studies on sleep, there is not a debate in the medical community. People just think, I'm going to push limits, push limits, push limits, which a lot of times have undercurrents of busyness and productivity and efficiency and go, 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 go. But ask all those people as they will burn out. That is not sustainable. A more sustainable pace is sleeping well, getting seven to nine hours of sleep because you can sustain that pace. Where 
I write about in Health is Freedom, is sleeping well and resting well. You need a sustainable pace for both your physical and your internal, your mental and emotional and spiritual, because we're not meant to go, 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 go and have our mind on all the time. So there is, there is that rhythm we need to follow. So much to unpack there. <clears throat> okay. So for the sake of time and getting to the three and 30, it, I hear you. I'm, 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 I'm on board. Excuse me. I sleep five to six hours. I hear you about seven to nine hours. Give me, give me whatever else high level thoughts and tips on. All right. I, I want to improve my sleep. What you got for me? The three main tips I, I talk about are prime your environment, minimize your stimulants, and have a routine. Minimize your stimulants and have a routine. So um, I'll talk about the first one um, that we can unpack more later is priming your environment because your sleeping environment can make or break your sleep quality and quantity. So mm-hmm. the things that we like to share are keep it cool, dark, quiet, calm, comfortable, all these all these things as far as practically your body can't actually fall asleep until your core temperature decreases about two to three degrees um, at night, which is why it's easier to fall asleep in a cooler environment than a warmer environment. Um, So keeping it cool, we literally keep our thermostat at 66 degrees. Um, Calls crazy. Also, every every single bit of light is bidding for your brain's attention because it's a stimulus. So any kind of light is, can disrupt your sleep. So I sleep with a sleep mask every single night and it's, and I've almost trained my brain where like I don't sleep as well without that sleep mask because I know it's going to be pitch black. The other thing is keeping it um keeping it quiet. We sleep with a sound machine every single night Come on. because that's drowning out all the other external noise, but it's also letting your body get into deep and REM sleep better because there's just that constant white noise in the background. So it's almost like finding that that state easier. So just those three things, and then you find a bed that's comfortable. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but find a, find a comfortable sleeping environment. But just we talk about priming your environment in those ways. Maybe it's blackout curtains. Maybe it's reading before bed. And maybe it's um, having a thin sheet rather than a thick comforter so you can keep it cool. Like there's, there's different ways you can keep it cool, dark, and quiet. But those are just a couple quick tips. That's great. and as we transition away from this, we get listeners, we could talk a lot about sleep, but I think both of us care deeply about sleep and I'm, I'm fully on board that it's habit number one and that it impacts everything. When we say it impacts everything, what's, what is commonly seen in culture in regards to sleep is, Hey, if you get your sleep, you maximize your performance. And they're always, always, always talking about physical performance. That's, that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's an incomplete picture, which is the common problem we see in culture when, it, yeah. when we talk about health. They're painting an incomplete picture on what health actually is. You will actually get, get and see more benefit from getting seven to nine hours of sleep in your spiritual walk with Jesus, in your marriages, in your relationships and friendships at work or outside of work. That will be one of the biggest yeah. areas of growth that you... You know, we talk about liking what you see in the mirror, love and the inner peace you feel. Love and the inner peace you feel comes from being well rested, both body and mind and soul. And so, man, we got a lot that we could unpack there, Alex. But for the sake of time, we're gonna we're not gonna go into it all. Trevor, we'll we should later, do though. this. We should unpack more because not only do we have more tips, but also if someone's like, "Well, I can sleep five to six hours a night and I'm fine." Yeah, fine is great, but it's not optimal. But there's also, I can share a bunch of statistics on why it may not be best on how it disrupts your hormones and it actually increases likelihood of cancer and heart attacks. And it actually um, decodes your DNA strands for more deconstructive. And when you get six hours of sleep or less per night, your immunity drops by 70%. So there's, the science is not, the science is clear. It's just a mm-hmm. matter of, do you want to see change and do you want to be truly healthy? Then you have to sleep. It's non-negotiable. Even, oh man, we, we could really spend so much time on this. The last thing I'll share is you're not going to plug your phone up and unplug it at 70%. You're going to let it charge all the way to 100%. Exactly. So why don't you let your body do the same thing? 
Trevor, Anyways, okay, I need I need to share this really quick because you just spark this, and then we can end sleep. I feel so just passionate about Alex sleep. Alex is big, 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 big sleep guy. I mean, I am too, but Alex is like the king of it. I I get, I got so made fun of in college because I'd literally, all right, guys, it's 9 o'clock. I'm going to bed, and I created, like, we had bunks in college. I literally put uh, blankets because I didn't have an eye mask back then. I put blankets around the bunk so I would have a, a dark sleeping environment. I'd put my AirPods in and literally be asleep by 9 or 10 o'clock. I'd be like, all right, Alex, I'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Here is the one of the paradigms I think about when it comes to holo health and sleep. I call it your true health battery. Here is how your sleep impacts your faith and your spiritual disciplines. When you sleep full, honestly, I think eight to nine hours, but it may be seven for you. Seven to nine is what science says. When you sleep a good night's rest, like you said, Trevor, you are resetting your battery back to 100%. If we are only getting five to six hours, our battery is only getting set to 60 to 70%. What I realize is that for me, and I would argue for most people, the fruits of the spirit occur in the 80 to 90 to 100%. I can better exhibit kindness and patience and self-control when I'm fully rested because my cup is full and my battery is recharged. When I am getting exhausted throughout the day or I'm consistently only sleeping five hours each night and my battery is only at like a 40, 50 percent. It decreases the likelihood or I'm not setting myself up in a better opportunity to engage in the fruits of the spirit or set my mind in the spirit because I'm running on empty. So the, the fruits of the spirit really occur in the 80, 90, 100% and that happens through consistently sleeping well. Does that make sense? It makes plenty of sense. I love it. I'm going to take credit for you coming to that re realization because I remember you. that Thank one you, time Trevor. that I... Uh, probably got like four and a half hours of sleep and we talked at the gym and we basically unpacked everything you just shared and then all of a sudden the battery existed and i was like well <laughs> that's what happens hey guys i'm i'm the one <laughs> dipping in and out of living a truly healthy life and alex is like i'm gonna learn from trevor's mistakes for context i health is attention to manage which means sleep is attention to manage we'll unpack that at another time but oh we have yeah yes we have so much more to talk about